whenever you visit Goa, I'm sure you secretly wish to own a gorgeous, colorful house like this. But these centuries-old houses come with a lot of history and many stories. Let me tell you one. We all know about the Portuguese colonization of Goa for about 450 years, which went on till 1967. Naturally, it had a huge influence on Goan food, culture, and most importantly, architecture. It is because of this that we still see many ruins and some still well-preserved, beautiful splashes of colourful houses everywhere around Goa. Mainly, the reason to colour these houses was decorative and to please the eye. But it was not the only reason. If one did not colour the houses in those days, the Portuguese could find them as white colour was associated with Virgin Mary. And only churches and chapels could have the colour white. Hmm, interesting, right? Anyway, I was lucky enough to visit one such well-preserved 450-year-old Pinto Villa in Santa Cruz owned by the Pintos for many generations. The French Renaissance model and the sheer size of the gorgeous house is simply mesmerizing. Interestingly, the people living in this village are called people with worm on the waist. The owner of the house shared the story with me. Do you borrow this too? First of all, let me welcome you into warm welcome to Goa. Warm welcome to our village, a most scenic and picturesque village of Santa Cruz. Also, the people from Santa Cruz are also known as, in short, Bandak Kido, which means worms around the waist, literally. Uh, there's a small, short, interesting story because it happened in one of the corners of our village where apparently one there was a dispute over the land and one of the guys was buried under the land to ask the land who actually it belongs to. In the in the garb of attaining success, they've apparently forgot the man in the, in the fields and when they went back after four days, they had found that he had got worms around the waist. So that's why we are called as Bandak Kido. Coming back to the house, Mr. Pinto welcomed me inside his home and showed me around. Be ready to be bowled over like I was. Everything from the gorgeous living room, the bedrooms, the hallway, the kitchen, the study, the backyard. Everything is simply stunning. The old houses were made with a lot of thought behind it to make them naturally sustainable, as the concept of eco-friendly did not exist 450 years ago. The high ceilings were meant to have a higher cooling effect. The long windows were placed strategically to allow cross ventilation for the same reason. The teak or rosewood furniture like the chairs and almiras were mostly carved with the owner's names. But since these houses were meant for the rich and the elite, security could be a concern and there was a very cool way to prevent the attacks from the outside. I want to show you a slot. We have a slot here, which uh, apparently opens into the other side of the room and which was used to fire arms from the other side of the room, which I would like to show you if you can come this side. The slot opens here. They would corner them in this veranda here at the entrance and then they would fire arms from the side. So that would be a one form of uh, strategic uh, defense to protect these houses. Before leaving the house, I went for one last look around and noticed the old wash basins, antique refrigerators, coffee makers, utensils and so much more. I imagined what amazing times this hall, this house must have seen. So many happy and not so happy memories. That is what a home is, right? Finally, I saw the most important part of any Goan house. Balkao, the porch with a stone bench meant to enjoy the breeze, chit chat with neighbors, or simply sing songs with the family. So the next time you are in Goa, make it a point to check out one of these gorgeous houses and appreciate their beauty. Maybe you will also find a story and I will see you in my next one. Khushiyan always!